point is, for every Huckabee and Palin and Dick Armey and Jim DeMint, there are literally hundreds of, uh, if not thousands, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of middle managers, of uh, people, and they're all getting paid. I mean, you know, right. when, we hear about when we hear about $250 million or $500 million coming from the Koch brothers in a cycle, right. where does that money go? It goes of course, if you're the- if you're the local boss hog in Hazard County, Georgia, then you know you're making sure that you're you're like I'll turn out the voters for you. You know Indeed. I'll do this. I'll do that. Here's ten million for this. Five. I mean, by the time you're done, you're you're a local. You know these local elites, as I would call them, all over the country. Uh, they get rich. You know. Look, I mean, you can this. see the model. Uh, look, the, you can see the model with the fix the debt people. All right, well, let's just do, uh, 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 cover this because I, I don't think a lot of people were aware of what happened yesterday. Yesterday at 2 p.m., Fix the Debt, which is the group that um, is fronted by Alan Simpson and Erskine Bowles, which is funded by a uh, hedge fund billionaire named Pete Peterson. Uh, Their whole agenda is to cut Social Security. You remember uh, Alan Simpson uh, famously said there were 300 million teat suckers in this country. Erskine Bowles tried to privatize it when he worked in the Clinton administration. Uh, and and so this is this is their uh, uh, this is their agenda, and they have no constituency, zero, but they are they are just awash in so much money that they hold found they they hold seminars and conferences and they fly. They fly media people and they hire, right. you know, uh, former senators and former uh, governors and governors. Teams. And they just, there's yeah. just there's so much money. They're so awash in money. Yesterday was a perfect example of this. Some social media consultant being paid six figures said, we're going to have a Q&A. What they didn't realize is that no one follows them on Twitter. They have no natural constituency. They went online for an hour and did debt Q&A. They got maybe, I don't know, hundreds of responses and not one. And this was done clinically by Susie Kim at the Washington Post. Not one of them was not a troll like me or you who were uh, and Michael and, and Matt who were pounding them. Uh, I mean, it, it started, it spread like wildfire. You had, you know, David Day and weighing and you had Atrios, you had Digby, you had just people just hopped on board here, um, uh, uh, just hammering them with uh, 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 Professor uh, Kelton at uh, University of Missouri, hammering them with either facts and figures or with smart alecky comments like you and I did. Um, like, you know, and, I know. And, How many old people do you have to eat for one old person to get by without Social Security? But Things this like that. just completely... Everything from that to actually like real numbers, it was good. It completely exposed them as being a sham, a total sham. If it weren't for the millions and tens of millions of dollars that were pouring through that organization, they wouldn't even have uh, the uh, the wherewithal to have a Twitter feed. Uh, right. But and that's all that's there. It's just the money. Who maybe said you should buy off 50 people to show up and yeah. pretend that they uh, believe in what you believe, but that's the whole thing. You're right. It's not that they, any of these local people they're paying off anywhere around the country are actually competent. Right. That they was should, just sheer incompetence on their sh- part. They should buy I mean, austerity least- bot accounts. Yeah, at least have one guy making like 20 fake well, accounts. Do you like, realize what God. must have happened was that yeah. these guys were just like, you know, they had this consultant come in. They, they're, they're, they've never even questioned the premise like, hey, what's going to happen if we literally have zero real constituency for this? I mean, like zero constituency. Nobody asked that question. There was probably one guy who was, uh, you know, a hired spokesperson sitting in a room with one guy who knows how to operate Twitter, and they were so overwhelmed with negative responses, they didn't even have the wherewithal to go and fake tweet themselves uh, to ask a real question. And, right, and then it ends up, it ends up in the Washington Post as like a negative story. Oh, yeah, it was everywhere. Terrible. It was in the Business Insider. I, I, Hayes was talking about his Click 3. I mean, it was, it was, it was fascinating, but... What 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 is what is it, it just goes to show you just what a what a graph what it just it's, it's just like this is a scam, this is just yeah. a scam and everybody who goes and works for them is this it's just they're scam artists, uh they're just you know we're just gonna and and I've seen it look I saw it at Air America I'm not saying it's it's you you can only find it in one area but this is what is driving 
So listen, much of what, what poses as politics today is just people who are enriching themselves. This listen, is- I've worked on, on, you know, in various places on the left, and uh, you, you brought up Air America. I mean, hell, when I, I got my start in politics, I was working on, you know, the re-election of Bill Clinton in 96 at a, at a firm uh, known as Penn and Schoen. Talk about uh, people who exactly. so and oh, who aren't really on the left, but get to find a way to get rich off of you know playing like they're on the left and having and being completely incompetent. Um, with Mark Penn's brilliant ignore the uh, caucuses strategy for Hillary Clinton in right. 2008, um, and so you, it's not to say this doesn't happen on the left. Of course it does, but it's just, just not as much so money. Much more money yeah. on the right, and frankly, let's just be honest here: the education level of those who make up the base of the right is obviously so much lower. Your average person is so much dumber, and I don't care if that makes me mean for saying that, that these kinds of scams like the email list, like what Dick Morris did last time selling his email list to anybody and paying himself for it and all that stuff, it makes it very easy to pull off these kinds of scams because, again, you're dealing with the people who fall for the email that says, I only need your Social Security number. I have $20 million in Nigeria in a bank. Right. Give me your Social Security number, all their personal information, and I will send you half of it. And these people are the types of people that fall for crap like that, because that's essentially all the, this other stuff is, you yep. know. And so, um, so it do, again, it does happen on the left. It happens so much more on the right. And as you pointed out, you know, Michael Lind uh, wrote a great piece in Salon uh, uh, similar to this about how that the Tea Party's real strength were, were the, you know, were these local elites and the low and it always has been if you think about it to for people who've compared what's going on more recently and pointed out that you know the people showing up with the confederate flag at the white house is not an accident this is nothing new the media loves to portray things oh this tea party uprising this is the same mass resistance against segregation the same kind of stuff that's been going on most of the energy for the tea party is in the south and certain rural parts of the midwest and the west that's where you're getting this from. It's the same place that you've always gotten the most right-wing, you know, politics, for support for segregation and everything else. And, and, and in these places, just the way you had local slaveholders who didn't want to give up their power, you know, fast forward 50 years, you know, to, to other people that have, have local companies they don't want regulated because, oh, God forbid, I have to let somebody black come in and eat at the, at the, at the lunch counter. It's the same thing. These local elites who have their, you know, who, who run these crap hole places – do not want any of their power taken away. If the federal government comes in and tries to enforce any kind of equality or anything like that, inevitably they lose their power. Yep. So, and, and, you and, know, that, that's it, what you're looking at. Anybody ever see the movie uh, Roadhouse? That's what you're dealing with. I have seen that, actually, multiple times. Uh, and you're but, dealing with that guy. You need If we could have Patrick Swayze come in and kick every one of these guys' asses, we'd solve the problem overnight. 